Hey peeps, what's going on? It's Josh. I uh, wanted to make a quick video. This one is specifically about um, talking to dispatch. Maggie's awake with me right now. So we left, uh, we, we got to our 01 and we got loaded. And it took a little bit of time, but not too much. It was, it was reasonable, totally reasonable. Um, so I let dispatch know what's going on. Um, at our 01, the scale wasn't working, but they only loaded us with like a few thousand pounds. So honestly, it's not even enough to make us overweight on any axle. Cool. Dispatch is like dope. You're good to roll because at this shipper, you're not supposed to leave without um, scaling. Which I still have to update that shipper and 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 let other drivers know that their scale is completely screwed. Um, it just wasn't working at all. So, um, we already had our fuel destination picked out. Now, my, um, fuel gauge does not work. Um, it's a Freightliner known issue and, uh, RA knows about it. Yada, yada. So, we plan out carefully. Um, uh, Ellie taught me that you can, in your menu, reset your trip and it will log how many gallons of fuel that you've added or that you've used. So you can add a few more on top of that um, to account for your APU and then that basically tells you what you're using so you can keep track of what you're adding, what you're using, yada yada. Also, um, if you have a quad, a quad, words, if you have a Qualcomm, you can go into the system tab or the system page and there's a V as in Victor, D as in David, S as in Samuel tab and on that it shows you what fuel you should have left. Now, I don't know how accurate that page is. I don't know how accurate the screen on the dash is for what, you know, for what everything is. We came off of home time and we got a really short little load so i only added like 52 or 53 gallons of fuel because we didn't need much and just trying to think about it like the bean counters do you only want to add what you need for that trip in most instances now if it were colder like we're in california so it's not Otherwise, I would keep a lot more fuel on deck because it's a safety concern. Also, if it were the middle of summer, I would keep more fuel on deck because it's a safety concern. You need fuel to be able to keep your temperature regulated. But right now, it's not such a big concern, so I only added 53 gallons. Kind of wish I had done more now because here we are. I've used 54 gallons based on the dash, so we're going to estimate that I've used about 60 gallons. Um, and so... The VDS tab on the system screen is telling me I have 25.2% fuel left in my tanks. Don't know how accurate that is. My screen tells me that I used everything that I added. So what that means is that I'm at a quarter of a tank at best. And what that means per Darwin is that we are fucking empty. Now, this fuel destination that we planned on, their pumps are down. Their pumps should be up within the next hour or so, so they said. So we're waiting to see what happens with that. But um, I, I, the 160 miles down the road is another fuel destination, and I called. Their pumps are working. So if I could get there, and I, let's, okay, real talk, I possibly could get there. Or I could run out of fuel. If I run out of fuel and my fuel gauge is below a quarter of a tank, that's on me for the wrecker. Even though I'm a company driver. So, um, and also, it's really bad for the truck to run out of fuel. Like, I can't tell you how bad it is for a car, let alone a truck, to run out of fuel because all of the gunk at the bottom of your tanks is now going through your fuel filter and your fuel system, and that's really not good. Um, so I don't want to do that. And also, it's not good for the load, it's not good for my hours, it's not good for any of the above. So right now, all of these pumps are shut down. And there are several of us who are in this predicament. Um, one of the other guys was like, are you kidding me, man? Like, I need fuel, I can't go anywhere. There is no parking, this lot is full. Um, so I 
I'm at the fuel island. So I was sitting here like, I don't know what to do. Because I could take a risk and it could pan out and things could be great. In which case, yay. Or I could take a risk and I could really mess up. In which case, I'm going to cost the company more money than me sitting here for an hour is going to cost. Now, when I first got this load, it was already determined that it was going to have to be repowered. That's just what my dispatcher told me. And I was like, groovy like a drive-in movie. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem being repowered. Um, we're pulling in the wrong way. Ooh. What is he doing? He's leaving. There's an exit over there? I thought the exit was behind us. No, there's an exit right there. Oh. No, he just U-turned. Well, that was stupid, but there's an exit right there. Yeah, big dummy. Dick Horse says don't U-turn. Anyway. Um. <laughs> sorry. Just fishbowling over here. Watching watching the world spin as it were so i'm sitting here freaking out and i'm not sure what to do and i'm like you know what dispatch is there for a reason yeah they might roll their eyes oh it's another novel from josh because i'm sending them another long message but at the same time number one i value their input um no they may not be out here on the road but they do have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and in my opinion, they are removed so they can see the bigger picture. Whereas I'm in this truck and I can see what I can see from where I am and I don't know what the priorities are always because I'm still learning every single day. So I called dispatch. Well, I didn't call. I sent a message to dispatch because I felt like I could more clearly lay out all of the details and let them ask me further questions if they have them and so one of the dispatchers that I really like working with he got back to me and he was like you know I wouldn't risk it I would sit there and wait rather than take a big risk and I was like thank you because number one it's not like I don't want to take accountability for making the decision but also as a company driver this isn't I mean this is my ship but it's not just my ship so, if I'm going to take a risk, it would be one thing if I were an owner-op and I wanted to take a risk. The guy behind me is going to come up and yell at me soon because it's already happened once. He's going to come up and yell. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, if I were going to take a risk and it's my truck, that's one thing. But I don't want to take a risk with the company's truck and do damage to it when it doesn't need to happen if they're okay with me sitting and waiting. And that's what we're doing. We're sitting and waiting. So mainly this this uh, this um, video is just kind of to encourage you. You may not want to ask a bunch of questions, but that's what they're there for, dispatch. They're supposed to be big brother they're supposed to be there to help us and not big brother in a bad sense but big brother in a sense where like I don't know what to do here um can you give me can you can you give me your opinion or some thoughts or tell me what the company would like me to do from a company standpoint um and that's you know honestly I think that um I made the right decision in reaching out to them and, and here's the thing in trucking you are going to make so many choices. So many choices. And some Good of them... Good thing that he who shall not be named isn't working. He will just tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> what? That's very negative. Yeah, is it wrong? That's very negative. We're not talking about call. that. We're not talking about that. Um, but basically, so... I don't know why you would say that in this video. Why not? Because it's not appropriate. Um, but basically... And it's not positive. We don't put out negative shit to the world like that. People, Other people can do what they want to do. And that's karma. But as for me and mine... I prefer to just, you know... Try and do the right thing. And ultimately... 
So if you're sitting here and, and you're and you're wondering and you're scared and you're and it, call dispatch. Um, if you are are lucky enough to still have a trainer that you can reach out to, reach out to your trainer. Document things on the Qualcomm because it's not that I didn't want to make the decision or be responsible for making the decision. It's that I don't feel like I have the experience to know where the priorities lie to make the right decision without a little bit of support. So, yeah, that's basically what we're what 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 I wanted to talk about because um, it, it's. It's hard to know what to do out here, and it's nice when you can reach out to dispatch and they're going to give you an honest opinion, or they're going to give you uh, an answer and say, hey, this is the situation, why don't you go ahead and wait it out. It sucks to be sitting, it sucks to be, it sucks to wait it out, but you know what, go ahead and do that, and you know, that way we don't have you running out of fuel, because you never, you never know if you're going to be able to get to the side of the road. If you run out of fuel, <clears throat> you could run out in the middle of a lane or something, and then it, it, it could end up being a safety risk. Then you're risking not only the load, but the truck and your lives, and nothing's worth your life. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope that you guys are good. Um, I'm, I'm seeing some of the comments, but I've been busy, so I haven't been able to respond to them. My sleep is hella broken up right now, but that's okay. We're fine. But um, I just wanted you guys to know thank you uh, that I want to thank you for commenting and watching and spending a part of your day with me. Um, I appreciate it more than you know. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to probably get yelled at by another trucker in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, much love. Peep out.